Welcome back guys. Today we are going to take a look at this digital clamp meter. Why do I need another meter? If we push this aside, you will see that I have plenty of normal DVMs. I even have two more of those, uh, other brands though. And for measuring normal current and voltage and resistance they are good enough. And I also have already a clamp meter. It also can hook up type K temperature probe for high temperature measurements. So I like this one really a lot. So why did I go and buy this one here in the middle? The reason for that is that this one do have a couple of functionality that the other ones does not have. One of them that is the main reason is the inrush current. This one can measure inrush current or this one can measure inrush current and that's really really good. It also do true RMS measurement. With that said, it also does like max and minimum measurements and we start with open it up and out of the box you get another box or actually a rather nice little case. Basically the case is protecting the unit and the unit is inside but what I am missing here that I would have loved to have is some kind of mark on this box that actually states what's inside of it actually. So let's dig into this box here. We open it up and we'll see what we have. On the left side here we have the manual nicely tucked inside. Uh, the white stuff here is residue to the actual protection that were in here before I open it. We have a set of cables here we have two and nicely probes uh, with protection. We'll see how they work up. 10 amp rated. They, they look really cool but I'm not sure how they are. The wires are somewhat silicon based I think. They are rather nice to touch. And we have the most interesting part here, the unit. The case itself is soft and nice inside so that's good but let's take a look at the unit the unit itself is rather big if we compare this one to my other one you will see the size differences it's a little bit longer it's a little bit wider and it's even a little bit thicker with that said it's still not a really really big unit but on the other hand it's not as small and nimble as this one here is the unit itself opens the clamp on one side, so the other side is actually locked in place, and that's normal on most of them. It has a working light inside of here, so you can see what you are doing. The knob on top here, you can choose between different places. Uh, one disadvantage with that is that it's a little bit tricky to see the arrow. The arrow is on the top here, but it could also be on the bottom here. A nice feature of this is that if you're holding it like this, you can change the mode with your thumb. With that said, it's a little bit trickier to do it if you are left-handed, but it is doable. It has a couple of functionality buttons. They are easy to press and they work, seem to work really good. It's now time to hook in a couple of batteries to see if we can get this running. After sacrificing one of my other units, I have this battery here now. And it also has an auto setting, so it actually wanders between the different settings automatically, and that's really, really nice. So just for fun, let's hook this up and see what we can do with it. So we plug it in, and what you need to be aware of here is that if you plug it in the first step, you will see that it is doesn't stick. You need to press it in all the way. Otherwise you won't get contact. We we'll do the same with the other one. And we're going to measure voltage. I'm not going to do a complete comparison with the other units. I'm just going to try it out. 416 volt or something like that. And what I did notice is that as you can see the millivolt is wandering all over the world. And that's not a big issue as such, because as soon as you start to measure, it will work. If we go down to the resistance part, and we 
measure the resistance of its own. Note that this is the resistance of the wires. Depending on the contact you can see if I turn it back and forth it changes all the time. This is a 1 ohm resistor. I would say it's a little bit slow to set in. Uh, it seemed to be rather spot on. Really good. It can measure capacitance and the frequency. Non-contact voltage detection. This top edge against something and it will measure it. As you can see when I tap it, it beeps. Basically if I take a wire like this one here it senses the voltage. That's a neat little function as well. So let's go back to the voltage. Uh, I did notice one thing with my unit and that is when I turn to max and min the unit hangs. It doesn't work. I cannot do anything anymore. And it turned off and on again. And in worst case, it only beeps. So there is a big issue with this unit. I need to contact the seller and I will do a follow up video for it. So let's go back to the reason why I bought this unit. The reason I bought this unit is the inrush current system. So basically we have this meter here. If I short this out you will see that I have kind of one amp going out. It's not 100% accurate it's this meter but it's good enough. We take this unit here. What we need to do now is that first of all we go to the low end setting here. So we first start by measuring the actual current going through. And the thing is that it always goes to AC mode in the bottom left corner here. And we need to change that. We do that by pressing the function button. So now we are in DC mode. In DC mode, we clamp it around one of these here. And we get a reading directly. And it's a little bit, it's wandering a little bit back and forth. You can go to relative. And then you reset it to zero kind of. So you always go, need to go to relative when you're measuring, when it's jumping up and down. I put them together and we'll see that we have 0.92 there. We'll change that a tiny bit. And the value here is very, very close. I mean very close. So let's turn this up. 2.3 and we're still very, very close on this meter. Let's go up to the maximum of this one, 498, 494, 492. I would state that it is very, very close. Also note that this meter is not taking into account the wires. So let's see if we can do an inrush current metering. To do that, you need to be in AC mode. So we switch back to AC and you press and hold the relative button for two seconds and you are in inrush current mode. Then it's just a matter of touching the probes and it will be picking up the inrush current during the first milliseconds. As you can see it's not that high. We reset again. So even though we have five amps going in, the inrush current in the beginning is only three and a half amp. And the reason for that is because of how this is handling it. As you can see now, I have now brought out my spot welder 709A. So let's test the current here. Peter Matthews in the HP Powerwall did with Bruno actually a quick test of the, the current going out from this unit. I'm going to see if my sheep inrush meter here will measure the same current going out. In theory it should measure the same current and that's what we want to see now. Does it do it or does it not? Because if we get close to, I think it was 690, so somewhere between 650 and 700. This meter can do up to 60 amp, up to 600 amp and up to 1000 amps. So it should be able to measure it if so. Uh, we will start with low end, the 600 amp setting. And we still have it to inrush current and we reset it. 
and it's now time to hook it up. I'm hooking it up to one of the lines here and I'm going to use this big iron piece here for actually holding against to get a good contact. So we start with the lower setting. Uh, I will say we will start with four, four and a half. No pulses and we'll see what we get. And we started up at 272 amps. So let's raise this up. Let's go to six. Two hundred sixty-one, a little bit too much spark, so let's reset that. Three hundred ninety-four amps. Let's go up to maximum, and we'll see what we can get out of this beast. Four hundred and ten amps was the maximum with zero pulses. Reset again to see. Five hundred and two. 490, so roughly around 500 amps with zero pulses. So let's go to two pulses and see what we get out of it. And suddenly we are up to 620 amps. And now we hit the limit. This means that we cannot go further. And that also means that we were above 600 amps in this current mode. So let's go to 1000. And we are going to do the inrush current again. Two pulses maximum. 603. So let's raise it up a little bit more. More pulses. 695 amps. And I would say that we are at the same level as Peter was. 676. I would consider this. It's a K value, because that means that this unit is actually close to measuring the same current as the one that Bruno tested, uh, that spot welder that Peter had, or if you want to check that video out, I have links down be below, of course. So on the back side of this board, you have most of the numbers for the unit. And you can see that there are two different versions. I'm using the first version there. It have the same measurement settings, uh, both of them, a little bit different, but still the same. And I would say that I'm happy with it so far. What's different between the B version and this version is that the, the B version have a dual display, the segments bar graph and a USB interface. So that means that this one that I have actually doesn't have the USB interface. I did skip it because I did not see what I should do with it. Due to the fact that my unit actually doesn't work properly. Because if I, as I said, go to the voltage and press the max, it hangs. So I'm going to talk to the seller and see what we can do about it. If this is a faulty unit, and then we'll do another test again. I like the unit so far. I have been trying it out. For instance, the part where it actually measures where you have uh, wires going into the wall, the top end part here. And it does pretty well. The manual itself do contain most of the stuff that you need. The good part about this manual is that it is totally in English. And what I can see about the manual is that most of the English is pretty good. It's not a Chinese translated manual from Google Translate. It's actually a proper manual. It got all the information needed. So once again guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. It was a short quick look at this new clamp meter that I got. It works but still it have an issue so let's see about that. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Bye!